welcome to episode 5 of the IFRS 15 Made Easy series. So far, we have learned how to identify a contract, its performance obligations, and how to determine the transaction price. In this episode, we will go through how to allocate the transaction price to the performance obligations in a contract. This video is brought to you by Kong Lim and Partners, Chartered Accountants of Singapore, and a member of JHI and TASC. The objective of this step is to allocate the transaction price to each performance obligation within a contract in an amount that depicts the amount of consideration to which the entity expects to be entitled in exchange of transferring the promised goods or services to the customer. The way to identify this amount is to base it on the relative standalone selling price of the promised goods or services. If the standalone selling price is not easily identifiable, the price should be estimated using the following methods. Number 1. The Adjusted Market Assessment Approach where the price of a good or service is estimated depending on what it is sold for in the market. Or, number two, the expected cost plus margin approach, which is the standalone selling price of the goods or services plus a reasonable profit margin. Or, number three, the residual approach. This is only used when you are unable to apply the other two methods. The residual approach is only allowed if the selling price of the good or service is highly variable or if the selling price is uncertain. This example will help you understand this better. Company C, a manufacturing company, enters into a contract with a customer to supply equipment at a transaction price of $1 million, payable upon delivery and installation. This price is inclusive of installation and training. Company C charges the same price regardless of whether installation and training is performed or not. Therefore, the $1 million is the standalone selling price for the equipment. Other companies can perform the installation and training services. The estimated fair value of the installation service is $10,000 while the estimated fair value of the training is $25,000. As we learned in Step 2, we can now determine that the installation and training services are separate performance obligations. On 1st September 20X4, the equipment was delivered to the customer and installation was completed on 1st November after which training commenced and will continue on a monthly basis for one year. Let's take a look at how to calculate the transaction price of each performance obligation in the contract. The relative fair value standalone selling price of each performance obligation is as follows. In the contract, it is stated that the transaction price payable upon delivery and installation is $1 million for all three performance obligations. Therefore, the calculation to allocate the transaction price in relation to the relative selling price is as follows. Hence, the allocated transaction price for each performance obligation would be These amounts are then recognised as revenue for this contract between Company C and its customer. Next, we must tackle cases of discount allocations. IFRS 15 states that an entity shall allocate a discount entirely to one or more, but not all, performance obligations in the contract if all of the following criteria are met. Number 1. The entity regularly sells each distinct good or service in the contract on a standalone basis. And, number two, the entity also regularly sells on a standalone basis a bundle of some of those distinct goods or services at a discount to the standalone selling price. 
And number three, the discount attributable to each bundle of goods or services is substantially the same as the discount in the contract. Take into consideration this journal entry. The transaction price is determined at $2,000. The standalone selling price of the item and the service provided is $2,200. The item is discounted at $50. The allocated transaction price would thus be as follows. And therefore, revenue recognized would be as follows. Where consideration is paid in advance, the entity will need to consider whether the contract includes a significant financing arrangement and, if so, Adjust for the time value of money. Details and examples of dealing with significant financing components were explained in Episode 4 of this video series. For more examples on Step 4 of IFRS 15, stay tuned for our future videos.